Starting tomorrow, I'm no longer just a shipping clerk. I'm chairman of the board. And it's all because of... Freaking.com Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, step right up. we got the future of financial transactions right here. Free staters experimenting with a prototype Bitcoin ATM machine. Since these images were taken in early 2013, I'd guess more than a few free staters have found themselves suddenly wealthy. Here are the downsides to this windfall. First, the very volatility that has allowed such a dramatic expansion in wealth is also showing itself to be Bitcoin's biggest weakness. I was just trying to make some sort of Bitcoin transaction yesterday and the, the prices were so wildly fluctuating from second to second that I, it was like I felt this intense pressure to make the decision quickly as the, you know, to this purchase site and I couldn't, and it seemed like it got almost impossible to negotiate any kind of trade that took more than, uh, you know, half a day to negotiate. For instance, if I wanted to buy or sell Bitcoin from a friend by email. You know, this kind of volatility is great for investing, but it, it's certainly not consistent with a stable currency. Right now, the dollar is far more stable than Bitcoin because it's just very slowly over the long term going down. Bitcoin is over the short term going, or at least the midterm, going up, it seems. And over the very short term, it can still do crazy things. But I think the thing is, you know, Bitcoin's scarcity is its biggest strength, but the scarcity is creating sort of an anti-currency environment. So, well, I think there needs to be, I have heard that, you know, there's like a hundred cryptocurrencies that have come out uh, during this Bitcoin boom to sort of compete with it. I've also heard that most of them don't really compete with it because they kind of just do the same thing with a different name. Oh, and hardly anyone, hardly anyone will accept those alternate cryptocurrencies. So what's needed is some sort of stable competition to Bitcoin, something that behaves a little more like silver or gold, which is to say, yeah, a lot more volatile than the dollar, but a lot less volatile than Bitcoin. At least you, you know, you, you don't feel second by second pressure, you know, when you're, when you're, in, when you're dealing with silver. Now, of these 100 cryptocurrencies, I would not be surprised if one of them does fit this definition or maybe one of them fills this niche. I assume the way you would make that happen would be to design its production model so that, well, actually, I don't know how it would be done. You tell me and you tell me if there is such a, a cryptocurrency already, if there even can be. Now, the second, uh, dark lining in this silver cloud would be the, I guess, well, I used to think that, you know, eventually there would, there would get to be a point where there would start to be a national envy of New Hampshire, where there are tensions between New Hampshire and, and other states, New Hampshire and the federal government, uh, you know, wealth envy. And I tell you what, I really saw that starting to come true when there was a geographically specific NPR article about Bitcoin. They were talking about how Bitcoin was disproportionately uh, owned by New Hampshire libertarians. The comments, some of them appear to have disappeared on that article now, but I remember seeing a, a definite tone. Uh, you know, the people who were posting were complaining about the fact that uh, free staters had achieved some wealth, some of them. I was definitely noticing that sort of envy vibe and i'm seeing that in some of the like i was watching you know reading some more some mainstream press stories about bitcoin nationally and a definite trend in the comments is you know stuff like i can't believe these people are making money and hiding it or i can't believe you know they're, they're part of the one percent you know or it's not fair well for now we can kind of laugh at people who are saying that but the fact is they pose a, a real danger because public envy of wealth i mean can we name the number of wars that has started, the number of people that have gotten put in jail, uh, the number of uh, concentration camps that have opened historically for people like that? Undefended wealth is like a target on your forehead. And of course, most of us aren't really able to entirely hide 
<clears throat> many of us don't even try to hide our Bitcoin transactions. But overall, of course, it's great to see our movement prospering a little bit more. And I guess wealth in some contexts can translate into power. I used to say back in the days when everybody assumed that we were a bunch of Coke uh, fronts, I say, you know, it'd be, it would be great if the Koch brothers or somebody would donate us money. Of course, they never did. I always, we, I, I always wondered, it wouldn't, it wouldn't it be great if the Free State Project had some wealthy benefactor? The truth is, it never has had that. It's always been making do with its thirty thousand dollar bank account from year to year, if I recall the numbers correctly. But now that may change as the Free Stater individuals themselves have hit some degree of investment pay dirt. It's also possible that these major earnings will also be uh, mitigated by major losses, just like you saw in the dot-com boom days. We'll see. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling, and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freekeen.com.